Thank you very much. I am Colin Crowell, Managing Director of the Blue Owl Group, which is a global consultancy um, made up of 17 consultants around the world as part of a collective. We are all former uh, members of the Twitter 1.0 public policy team. Uh, we have a collective uh, here in the US and in 11 countries around the world that work on uh, tech policy. I want to do this yet about meter and geopolitics, and I'm going to try to do it real slowly for um, people who know me, you know, I could go on for very fun on topics like this, but this is a lightning talk, so I'm going to have to speak uh, wicked fast. Uh, so one focus area is multi-stakeholderism, and to talk about the first era of the internet that follows, and then where we are today, and try to look at some similar threats and commonalities and things that have changed over time. But in order to understand the first era of the internet policy and even how it might be different from today, uh, you have to go back to the 1990s. And one of the six she heard was that there was legislation in the back that, uh, and that is this one key to the same she characterized it goes as you were or the certain vintage that will recognize this uh, slide, so that I brought. Um, but if you look at the first era of internet policy making, there were two things that were driving changes in one in the nineties. One was the rapid transition of technologies from analog to digital. That is what's happening in cable, or telepathy, and broadcasting, satellite, uh, wireless communications. All parts of our communications uh, tech uh, uh, framework, policy framework, that they never could have fitted silently into different areas with distinct services and distinctly regulated. But because all the technologies were going digital, they could cross pollinate across different networks. And you had through this ability of different networks, different communications medium to offer similar uh, types of confidence and services. So I think the other driving the course was Robert's the internet. Uh, in 1991, uh, Congress uh, voted to approve the uh, commercial public use of what was then called the National Research Education Network, uh, and that created an opportunity uh, very shortly thereafter for the rise of uh, the commercial and public uh, internet. So really, the 90s had factoring in those two issues. Here's 1990s era legislation. This is not an exhaustive list. This is an illustrative list. Um, but each of these had a um, impact on the internet ecosystem. The KLAC of 92 created in the 18 inch digital satellite competition to accommodate cable companies with a bad picture model, inducing cable to begin to upgrade their networks from analog to digital. KLAC 1992 also officiated. All exclusive phrase sites, we are the skin, we are the salary, swaps, energy. When we think of the debates today around creation, that is as a sense of creation uh, as Congress has said. Uh, the the fact that Rock Obama and Italian Coop created the digital wireless um, marketplace in the United States, communications that didn't for law enforcement, was out of uh, that. Law enforcement um, could have taken all the air clips with them on uh, for telephone wires or uh, wire taps because things were going on fiber optic cables and it's hard to fact. So they needed assistance from uh, telecom companies to uh, to get out of work. Hell, I have to make the 96, of course, to sit on the first uh, over all what you face laws to the United States. That included everything from uh, the uh, 1730. Um, so he raised program that brought the internet at the K-12 schools, so I raised the NCA remains sort of um, uh, underlying statute for how copyright uh, is handled, but not just in the U.S., but largely owned everywhere uh, around the world. And at the title of the Online Privacy Protection Act, 1998, um, uh, a fact that it's called an under, there was a few white overs hanging that uh, the law is 25 years old, and it remains the only internet specific priority to all kinds of that's 25 years old. So one thing that's interesting about that list of a major telecom and internet-related uh, laws that I passed in the 1990s is 
the folly man. It's sort of axiomatic of Washington these days where people say, oh, the Lily's given Bass Andres is an election year. He used to be the Congress only passed major internet related um, laws during the election years. So only one of them it isn't during the election year. So check this out. Starting from the bottom, Child Online Privacy Protection Act passed in October of 1998. The MCA passed in October of 1998. Khalid, issues the system of the Long Wars Act passed in October of 1994. Cable Act of 1992 passed in October of 1994. 1992. So all of them passed just weeks before the election went. So it took Congress on a bipartisan basis, um, you know, almost an entire Congress to get it done. But because this suite of issues was largely nonpartisan, or more bipartisan than well, say that, for him to say that, uh, you were able to work through a two year Congress, call in any, if could it, laws on the books uh, that I take it together, create it on the area that goes to the you know, 50 year and that sits uh, to that. So that's the fact that it delivers between Bahara and this summer. These were the order clicks of the nine. One of the things when you look at this list for here at related issues is that at the time that most of those laws were being considered, these companies were small. They were not really politically impactful corporate entities here. They were actively involved, many of them, these sort of fundraisers, the apparatus squash, they were relatively small compared to whether they should all present in the economy, but also compared to the sort of lobbying firm of, of Washington. Uh, that's different from today. Well, we say, well, just to the side, at the time you see how there was sort of groundswell of organizations that were created at the time to begin working on internet related digital technology issues. And so you see that there was a, a, a suite of things. And so, currently, the, the, uh, the Internet Engineer Task Force began in 1996, but it rose in the East were sort of born out of uh, that middle you in the 90s uh, when these issues were coming to the fore. Multi stakeholder organizations and civil society organizations. Compared to the internet companies of that era, we're on more equal footing to engage in called policy debates here in Washington and this was up. You look at today, some of these companies are on the biggest some companies in the world is actively engaged in mobile policy conversations around AI, for example. Um, and sort of the but the biases of policy makers that flipped. And then earlier their era, Congress and policymakers were dealing and arbitrating with sort of large industries around policies. And so the internet and the system, the young, uh, younger companies, the more entrepreneurial companies that were kind of like up, uh, hitting up and were basically the beneficiaries of government action. Oftentimes today you hear about the you know, Congress, government, it can't keep up with the data of that knowledge. In an earlier era, it was the government that was the prime, the first mover, that created the climate in policy conducive to investment, entrepreneurial injury, and competition. Government was moving faster than it uh, had to move first in order to create that uh, ecosystem, that climate up in policy. So the framework was established first by government, and then companies so it took advantage of the fact that government was unjacculating um, uh, markets that had been uh, more monolithic in certain cases, or more also probabilistic in others. Now, we're all as all as very quick now. We're all of the multi-stakeholder organizations that were created uh, and we're working at that? No, they were in the I remember um, my uh, boss on Capitol Hill, who was a house member at the time in Pernity, Saturday Army in Massachusetts, we held a hearing on ICANN, the Internet Corporation for Assigning Names and Numbers, and he said, uh, you know what? 
IBM is sort of like for internet governance, like the definition Winston Churchill had about democracy. It's the worst form of internet governance at that level, the default of internet governance. Those are the very ideas. So over time, web on web ships to web 2.0, and you start to uh, see uh, the companies get bigger, and the companies uh, start to have a disproportionate sway over policy. Governance sit on side plus, multi-stakeholder groups are diluted uh, in their in their hidden items. What do we this? We take it all off with digital and analog. We launched Shadowful that created applied conducive to investment and innovation, but we never did the same for governance. We never changed the law to migrate the Federal Communications Commission from a 1934 data for agency to one fit for a purpose so that you are that we were in this. Even today, government uh, across the uh, policy meeting on tech across the um, U.S. government it is split, it's divided. It is in the OSCP and it's the NSC. It's in the trade address office, it's in the Congress Department, and it's the at NIST, FTC, DOJ, and So the thing is spread out, and there's no one singular agency that's sort of fit for purpose. That was something that um, could have dealt with in the 90s to be in that process and never, never was done as a result. What I asked to have the Ted, well, we have to issue executive orders to the task all these different parts of the alphabet to do the show. And so that's one result of that. We ever looked at climate impacts, energy use, and then we didn't look, uh, uh, well, we did look at privacy data protection, data for votes, but it did data for just 12 and under. What can we do today? So if you take what's happened from Weather 1.0 through Weather 2.0 and Web 3, and now with Web 3.0, right? for Web 2.0, I was head of a little bit of policy at Twitter. And so I was like Twitter's Secretary of State. And Twitter is starting to act as a policy sovereign entity over the services it's provided. We had almost like two monadic relations with the governance and government recognitives. And governments also started to make that shit. Uh, Denmark created the tank ambassador of Ultis Silicon Valley in 2017. Okay. At the South Sea, quasi diplomatic relations um, when going to California. So, this was a nine hundred that was hit in Oakia. But if we cry to try to use this ritual, we get to the end of the day, just say, cool processes. At the best of the hour, we need to slash it around AI and put it through rather than later, because later. Maybe be too late. Uh, and born able to have a real crush career over AI because it involves other governments immediately uh, rather than in earlier with the US largely drove it in a call of cinema. So with that, I'm there, Doc. Thank you.